As we go to Nintendo Main, we have Kevin from I Play Games, and we talk about Celeste for a while. Mr. Oshiro can suck it. Say Virtual Console Nintendo. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to uh, Nintendo Main. This is episode 106. We are your hosts. I'm Trey. Uh, haven't beaten Celeste yet. Johnson. I'm Jeremy. I have beat Celeste. Mikowski. I'm John. Eternally round one knitter. Now, do I go as well? Because guess what? Oh, I'm I'll... Kevin Fair. I don't even own Celeste. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna introduce you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, and as our as our guest this week, we have uh, we have Kevin from I Play Games, who uh, put together the epic splatoon party that i went to that we got other guests from so what's up man hey i'm doing pretty good um i I still get a lot of messages about that splatoon party man it's a shame that like i haven't been able to host another one but there's plans for it oh yeah yeah do you ever do you ever do stuff with the squid west guys like help them organize events or anything (laughs) it's crazy because i literally miss them every single time um so when I do like events and stuff like that, sometimes they have me travel. And I know the last time they did something, I think it was in September, I was traveling to Indianapolis. So I missed that one. And then I know um, one of their members, uh, uh, Rozzy, has a uh, house events and stuff like that. And I think I was doing an event the same night he was doing a house event. So oh, okay. I miss them almost every single time. Oh. It's a shame. Well, I mean. I'm, it's, they seem to have a lot, so hopefully, eventually, yeah. you guys will get to get to cross paths in that way. I just got to host my own event again. That's the only way I get back with everybody is I have to purposely host another one. Oh, sure. That's how I get back in the groove. Nice. Then you'll know, you know you'll be there definitely. Right. Then I can guarantee that I'll be in it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I heard you're doing some uh, Midwest gaming classic stuff, which uh, we'll definitely get into that in more detail in the second part. Of course. But, yeah, that's awesome. Like we're all planning on being there, so. It's pretty cool because, like, those, I was telling John while he was here, like, the first, I went there, like, two years ago, like, first time I went to MGC, like, I I was there and I didn't know anybody, and then Jeremy came with me, and now John will be here, and now I'll know a bunch of other people there doing it, so it'll be cool. Nice. No, and it's perfect because it's a nice little ride up to Milwaukee, it don't take you very long, yeah, you yeah. know, it's it's not in the city, but it's not too far. Yeah, just around the corner, well, it's like an hour and a half, so let's not that bad. Yeah. All right, well, uh, do you want to talk news? There was, like, a couple news things that happened that sure. John was, a. Uh, Sending us stuff about. We can do that first and then talk about our stuff. I actually bought a bunch of stuff this week, so I want to talk about that. So you sent me a text about uh, Mario Kart on mobile. Is that, is that happening for real for Nintendo? Mario Kart on the mobile. This just broke maybe like two hours before we started recording. Yeah, I just uh, read Mario that. Kart. Yeah, coming that, to mobile. Does does that mean so, my my prediction is right? Because I said that there'd be a new Mario that? Kart this year. <laughs> and, yeah, and our, you were right. Yeah, you hit it right on the right on the head. It totally there. counts, man. Yeah. exactly what you were hoping for. It wasn't the Mario Kart that I wanted, but I did say there'd be a new Mario Kart this year. So <laughs> I was hoping for Mario Kart. What, what is it called again? It's called Mario Kart Tour? Just Tour. Yeah. Mario Kart Tour. And it says uh, sometime before March 2019, so it may not come out this year. So you might still be wrong, Trey. Oh, right. oh, I thought it said like sometime before March is in like it's coming out well, like now. Well, it could be any time before know? then, right? I thought, oh, I, I thought they said March 2018. I was like, oh shit, that's coming out like this month, you know. But I guess I misread it. Releasing in the fiscal year ending in March 2019. Oh, mm. okay. So oh, okay. So basically, in the next year, is what they're saying. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I hope that doesn't stop the uh, Mario Kart Nine from coming out, like the new one, or stop them from releasing that one. Because I'm not really a phone person. I mean, I like Mario Kart. I'm sure it'll be fun-ish to play. But I played mm-hmm. so- I played Sonic and uh, Sonic and Sega All Stars. On my phone, and uh, it worked okay, I guess, for the most part, but it was not the ideal way to play it. You know? Not the ideal way, but more for the situation where, oh, you didn't bring your Switch that day, and you're on the train, and you need something to do. Yeah. Sure, Mario Kart on your phone. Yeah. 
Sure. I have no idea how that would play. I mean, I guess just holding your finger against the screen and controlling the steering somehow that way. I figured that would be a little steering wheel on the bottom. No, see, either that or motion, right? Or the motion controls. Because wasn't there a wasn't there a DS control method where there was a steering wheel that you could like touch on the bottom screen? <laughs> Ridge the Racer. Yeah, there was, yeah. Ridge Racer. Maybe on something DS. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I read this a little bit earlier, um, and I, I I don't know. Honestly, I was confused. I know it opens up the market for Mario Kart to everyone that owns a phone, and that's like a billion people. But I felt like Mario Kart was already on a portable device, and I was like, well, mm. the problem is already solved. But I mean, like, I don't even leave home. I never leave home without my Switch. I oh, virtually sure. used yeah. it. To, I used it today to do a test at uh at one of the emporiums. So yeah. I don't know. I guess it's not really made for me. They weren't thinking of me. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I think it's supposed to be like me. I think the original idea of the mobile stuff was trying to get people who don't have Nintendo systems to get into getting Nintendo systems or whatever. Yeah. I right. It's people also to get people to, a while ago. yeah, it's to get people to spend a bunch of money on stuff too. Like you could probably buy carts and characters and Very true. all that stuff. So oh, those think, make a shit ton of money off of it. Do you think there'll be uh, microtransactions in there then? Sure, if you're losing this time, you can just pay five dollars to get to the end of the race. <laughs> you just buy a blue shell, like five dollars per uh, yeah. five dollars per number here in sixth just place. You gotta play like for a buck a piece. You gotta pay like twenty five to get up to first or something. I hope they don't do that. Well, I mean, they they did like with Super Mario Run. They did the you know the ten dollars for the whole thing, which was I thought was the ideal one. But I guess it didn't work that well for them. Like it worked a lot better for uh, Pocket Camp and like. Uh, and like Fire Emblem Heroes and all that. So where you maybe like, maybe like have you, you buy know. cups? Like that sounds like something Nintendo would do. They should just re- buy I can see that. <laughs> buy whole new courses. Yeah. They should just re-release Mole Cart and put Mario back in there. That's what they should do. <laughs> if you ever played that game, <laughs> the game that like blatantly ripped off the basically put the same courses in there and all that. We talked about that last. It's week. actually yeah, just that game with the Mario skin. Yeah, just put the <laughs> Mario back in there. Put the little sprites of Mario in there instead of the moles. And then this game totally it. ripped off Mole Cart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. Like I, I thought it was around the corner. Like it made it sound like I thought it was like oh shit, you know, it's like February tomorrow. It'll be in February or beginning of March. I was like oh that's cool, but. No, it seems like a long yeah. time to to make this announcement. Like for a mobile, yeah. I'm guessing it, it's going to be like summer or like maybe fall. Right. There's no yeah. way it goes all the way to March. Yeah. Well, that's like you're you're saying, John. It, the the new fiscal year starts in at the beginning of March, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. So that's like in a month. So they're just planning on it ha- coming out within yeah the next fiscal year. So it could come out in April. Yeah. Right before Labo or something. <laughs> Labo, Labo. So uh, interface with it? No, I hope not. No, please yeah, you, don't. You put your phone in there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you put your damn phone. Well, speak, in Labo. speaking of like announcing stuff that's going to happen way in the future. Uh, so is that the? So we have the exact date for Nintendo Online also now. Is what they're saying is September of this year, right? September fully, this year. Yeah, the, the fully <laughs> unveil whatever they're doing with that. You know, is there a? I don't know. They're going to do the virtual console. I wonder if they should try to do... Well, you guys have seen what Microsoft is doing, right? With that whole, like, uh, that $10 a pass. month thing where you can get... Yeah, you can even get, like, new games with it now. So you'll pay, like, yeah. like around, like, 100 a year, and you basically can rent any game on the new Xbox, Xbox One X stuff. So really trying to get people to, to buy that system, but, uh, <laughs> you know. It's like the Netflix of yeah. Xbox, is well, that what you mean? Like, for yeah. games? Yeah, it's what it's what everybody's been saying for a while that Nintendo should do, you know. And yeah, it's would be cool. I mean, doesn't PlayStation have a similar thing, but it doesn't work that well. Like, I haven't really tried it. It's all like uh, it's like on live where it's like you're streaming it through a server. Exactly. Yeah. So there's like a there's like always lag. There's no way to avoid the lag. No. no. Yeah, that's it why sucks. I never. I never it's really... been a terrible. Yeah, I was gonna say it's been a terrible experiment. I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest it to anybody. Yeah, the PlayStation Now. Yeah, yeah, right. The PlayStation Now is what they call it. Yeah, I've heard nothing but bad things about it, so I never tried it. <laughs> you know, because it's like, why? Why? I don't know. I tried to like. I I did like a trial of it, and I tried to play some games that maybe didn't like the lag wouldn't matter as much, but I don't it know. Does. It still bothered me. It still yeah. bothered me. Yeah, and I and I just couldn't like get immersed in the game and so i felt like i was playing a shitty uh, it's like pretending to play the game you yeah know I mean? exactly uh-huh you know and it's so like i one mean step like away from just watching it on YouTube. just watching it yeah, yeah. watching somebody <laughs> yeah. else do it because honestly in a lot of ways the only way they're enticing people are giving people little really low rate games for free and um mm. 
those are the only ones that you might be able to say like, oh, OK, like I, I don't feel bad about, you know, it lagging like this. But you play anything noteworthy. It's a horrible experience. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say like, like what, I tried playing Shadow of the Colossus. That was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to say, like, what would you play that like can lag and it's OK? What like that? Like a turn-based RPG thing or something? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's a perfect one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where it's gonna be kind of laggy as long as I don't know, it'd still be annoying though. I <laughs> think regardless, Monopoly, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can play Scrabble. Monopoly in there. Yeah. If you if you got a PlayStation and you subscribe to a service to play Monopoly, yeah. I got a question. I got a question. <laughs> your priority? <laughs> you definitely you definitely couldn't play Uno because you got to be like on the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Those cards, <laughs> you'd be like Uno. Uno. And you're like, damn it! You called me out. Yeah, somebody already called Uno. I can't. I can't get to it. It's too laggy. Dang it. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, they'll say something about the online service, and hopefully, some of the other stuff will get the features that Splatoon Two has. Do you ever use that app, Kevin? <laughs> the Nintendo um, app? Yeah, begrudgingly. Um, because guess what? I mean, the app still doesn't solve a core issue. Like, I, I understand the the motivation behind it, but, like, imagine this. You and I are playing on the Switch, and we haven't played, you know, in, uh, when we first traded friend codes in a while. Well, you don't necessarily know it's me unless my friend code, you know, flat out says my name. If I get creative with my friend code, mm -hmm. you don't even know who it is. And then the way it doesn't solve anything is I still need to Facebook you to say, can you join this lobby yeah. on our phone for Splatoon? Yeah. Like, I still need to use something else to get you to come to that. You know, I can't even send you a basic message and say, hey, join the phone lobby on and use the app. You know, so I, I feel yeah. like it doesn't quite solve the problem. Um, and then I was telling my brother this earlier. I was, if I pay twenty dollars this year for this, that's got to get fixed. Yeah. You know, in 2018, if I pay 20 bucks yeah. to have an online service, that has to be fixed. You can't even you can't even mention people like I mean, you can't even send a message like person to person in the switch nope. system you know it's like oh you could do i mean i think you could do that on the wii u even like you could message your friends you could you could see you could send a message to a friend yeah. and so it's like for all the great things i absolutely love my switch for i just find I, it's just crazy to me that like a simple like messaging system is like yeah. something we forgot about you know so yeah. uh yeah the app is cool, I guess, for what it does. But then the other thing that drives me up a wall is that um, I got to keep it open that whole time. I've like burnt my phone battery oh, yeah, literally yeah. while I was uh, uh, playing mobily, and uh, yeah, I burned my phone battery like mm -hmm. within like thirty minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, haven't uh, haven't used it a whole lot. Like uh, Jeremy and I, we used it a little bit on Salmon Run, but it's like, and we tried to do a uh, like it was just us. So if we wanted to do like turf wars, we couldn't talk to each other because we had to be on separate teams. Yeah, because you, you had to be on separate teams, and you can't yeah. talk to each other. So it's basically we played, and it's like okay. We're on the app, but we can't talk because we're. But yeah, so we did Salmon Run, and we were actually able to talk to somebody, uh, some people in there, and that was fun enough. But yeah, they need, they really should try to do it for like. I mean, they have so many online stuff now that it just it felt dumb. Like I'm yeah. playing the game, and I got headphone plugged into my phone. Yeah. I felt like I was talking to someone on the phone. Like it didn't feel like I, it was an integrated That's app. Right. Like, That's basically yeah. what it is. It's like. You can talk it to is, people but... on your phone while playing the game, which you could already do. I was like, I hope nobody has seen me doing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my cat was watching me, and I felt kind of embarrassed. And you were judged. <laughs> yeah, you were being judged. judged. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why are you doing that? You could have just called him. Who are you talking to on the phone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I'm still not. Yeah, I'm not really sold at all on this uh, Nintendo Internet thing. So they need to wow me in some way or do yeah. some sort of like netflix rental game thing or something like that you know like the like microsoft or make yeah. it work or i don't know as of right now it's like unless they want to do unless they might do like playstation and microsoft has done before where it's like all of a sudden you can't play online now unless you pay the 20 dollars a year you know which which that was you know playstation plus and uh xbox yeah. the yeah the xbox gold or whatever or live, I'm surprised or live they announced the date as far away as it is you know in september All right without giving any details about what the service is yeah i mean they they gave the details that they already gave so that doesn't count i would have appreciated a little bit more to like say oh boy that's going to be worth it but you know september is a long time away and they yeah. gave us nothing yeah so yeah it's not like a, it's, a, it's after e3 so there we go maybe e3 oh maybe they'll demonstrate some stuff there. i, I mean so. hopefully if yep. they have something cool they can do a little you know whatever Demonstrate whatever they got up their sleeve for that. Maybe they're going to bring Smash, you know? We can only hope. 
<laughs> you know, I've learned to expect great things from Nintendo hardware and Nintendo first party software. I've learned to not expect things from them in announcements. Yes. Like just be like, just wait. There's no you're not gonna find it out early. They're mm, not gonna be no. forthcoming. Yeah. They're not gonna be tr- you know, they're not gonna lay like a, a plan out for you. You're just gonna have to be surprised and be happy that you saw it in a Nintendo Direct one day. Yeah. Like, oh, they figured that out. All right, great. <laughs> I'm back out. Cool. Back in. Yeah. <laughs> no, I guess I, it's the like the silver lining perspective of like every time they delay something, you're like, What's the great reason that what's the doing yeah. yeah. <laughs> like what's the yep. what what are they waiting on this to come out to like to do? Yeah. Like with Zelda, maybe like it's Smash. Zelda definitely yeah. got delayed so to wait for the Switch to come out, you know, like, and it was awesome because there was no. a Switch. You're a hundred percent right, man. I mean, like, cause uh, you got to think most people during the Wii U times probably felt a particular way about announcements on new systems and what was going to happen. And yeah. I mean, like, um, I feel like I, I mean, I absolutely love taking my Switch around with me. I feel like it figures out so many problems. Mm-hmm. You know, I was gonna say one thing that I would always that I would say for like the way Nintendo makes their announcements. One good thing you could say is they're like normally when they announce something, it'll be out like that year. They'll be yeah. like, "Hey, there's this thing and it's coming out next next month." You know, it's not like it's not like Final Fantasy VII remake or like exactly or like Spider Man <laughs> PlayStation, which is like we don't even have dates for those, and they like got announced like two years ago. It's like what? Or yeah. the worst of them all, <laughs> Crackdown Three. Oh, they yeah. showed you videos, and they were like, man, I swear to you, it's coming, man. You know what, 2018? And that game's supposed to have come out with the Xbox One. So, yeah, uh, yeah, they'll show you videos, but, you know, can't yeah. you know, guarantee. But I, I agree with you on that. Normally, if something, you know, comes from the, if an announcement comes from them, they're usually pretty spot on on delivering on that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Because it's, it's not like, uh, hey, there's this new game, and it'll be out, I don't know, whenever. You know, they're, they're most of the stuff there. Like like Odyssey, like you know, we heard when we finally got saw that it wasn't really a whole lot of time to wait for it. It's like, oh nope. yeah, it's out in this year, you know. So, so I appreciate that they do that, but you know, it's all, always a whole lot of guessing. You know, that's kind of how we have to play it. But maybe like the Metroid Prime Four logo that might have been like the opposite of what you're saying, but uh. <laughs> well, true. I mean, but that when they actually. Like a- it's it's the it's there in the ether. There's this idea of doing it. <laughs> well, they yeah they Here's did do that. I mean, they did do that. Yeah, you're right. They did do that with uh, Metroid Prime Four, the Pokemon on Switch. They yeah. did it with the Fire Emblem on Switch, where they were just basically like, like the Pokemon one was my favorite one, where he's just a guy in an office, like a piece of paper, being like. I'm working on it. All right, like, it'll, it'll be out <laughs> soon enough. Like shut, I, the, shut the hell up. Like I promise. You know, I'm sorry about Ultra Sun and Moon, but we're working on it. It's going to happen. You know, <laughs> that's basically all, all you got. So, yeah, they do do, the, do that more now, I guess. But still, I mean, when you actually see the game moving, it seems to be, like, pretty quick with the, with their yeah. releases and all that. So Those are, like, the big, the two big ones, right? Did you guys have a – did you see anything else on there? Or what was the – you just sent me a thing about the Wii points, John. What was that? Oh, yeah. So they just announced today – as of I think it's March 26th, they're no longer going to be accepting. You can you can no longer purchase points for the original Wii. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. That's being shut down. Well, that's sooner than I thought. I thought they were going to do October of this year. So I better I better get on that because I still have a I still have four hundred. Wow, so yeah, that's nearly a year before they're shutting down. They're going to stop selling. Wow. Well, uh, well, next it's next year, right? It's next January 2019. I gotta when buy. Complete, I gotta buy Rondo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get Rondo of Blood, man. That's, it. that's I got the game it. I got to get while I can. <laughs> you can get it through your... I, I don't know if you ever did the transfer or not, but you can get it on your Wii U. Wii, no, I think you did. Well, that's but, what I mean. Yeah. I need yeah. to get it through the shop on the Wii U. Yeah. Period, yeah. Because I still got 400 points sitting on my Wii Shop account <laughs> on my on, on the Wii, so I need to get... I need to figure out something. Spend, spend, spend. Some sort of equation to like get that 400 off there. You know, like I'm sure I'll have to <laughs> add like an extra 10 or whatever. You know, I wanted to get to downloading everything because uh, John and John was here like for uh, John's from California. He was here like last weekend, and we played uh, we played Streets of Rage two for a while, and I actually oh. had to actually had to re-download it. I didn't even have it, so you get to hear some of that amazing uh, Wii Shop music on there. You know, that you probably hadn't heard in a while. But yeah, oh, yeah went, and you showed me the Drake remix of the Wii, <laughs> Wii Shop music. <laughs> I love that. The Hotline Bling one's so cool. Yeah, the cell phone one with the whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was. That's probably the only Drake song I've heard. Is this that one with the Wii Shop song in it? No, I heard it before that, but you know, just that song. It just matches up perfectly. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I miss uh, I miss music in the shop. We still have nothing on on the Switch. No, just like a yeah. couple, just a little bit. We like, probably never will. Every once in a while, like noises, like wah, wah, or wah, you know, whatever, like little stuff like that. But that's all we have. That's probably they shut down the Wii shop. I'll miss playing the game. That you always play when you're waiting for it to load. Where you follow you the, the Wii yeah, mode. Play with, you try yeah. to follow the little thing that's circling around. Yeah, while well, it loads. Yeah. Or, or, or should make like, an actual game of that. Or what was like really the worst is like watching Mario take your money, like when you buy the game and. That, right. Ding, ding, ding. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the download screen, was him running over the coins. <laughs> it's like. It's kind you're of like, that. oh, that's so cute. Wait, he's actually taking my money. Yeah. One stop. It's kind of them it's laughing at you, life. too. It's like, yeah, we're taking your money. And then, here it is. You're watching it. Just a weird, weird Nintendo style load screen, or just you know to show like the progress of the download and all that. But uh, is there, were there was there any other news that I that I missed for this week? See, I feel like all the big stuff like came out like right now. There's like a couple. There's like a couple things that we could mention. I guess I heard that Capcom like had a huge. They said they had a huge income boost from the Switch from selling yeah. a lot of the uh, Ultra Street Fighter Two. So that's good. You know, good. that should hopefully that'll make them make more switch stuff i know they're doing the 30th anniversary street fighter on there which is coming out in may yeah they should bring some other shit over too so so did uh neo geo or uh or sak i mean like a ton of people are playing uh uh king of fighters i think it's like 1999 or something like that there's a lot of them um, on there yeah i I have, a, I have a good amount of them i bought a lot of the snk stuff because i like those yeah. games but yeah i'm sure they're seeing a i mean they're still releasing them every week so i'm yeah i think they're still seeing a Good, good enough profit from it to keep to keep it going. So, but yeah, that's a, that's funny that that's like the most of their income that they got was from that <laughs> Ultra Street <laughs> Fighter two, which they didn't really put anything in. You know, it's just kind of like here, uh, here's this uh, very, Switch version of this very game much that we a game, made. Yeah, yeah, that already that exists. Already did, yeah. They didn't even have to do too much. We'll just put that awesome Hadoken mode on there, which I'm sure, <laughs> which I'm sure you played if you have it. You know, the motion yeah. one, <laughs> which I played like one time and never played again. And I was going to say, and then I put it down forever. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm excited about that game that has like 12 games on it that has, that's the same, it's the same price as that, but it has like a, and it's going to have like online modes for like a Street Fighter Alpha oh, 3. You're and talking like about a, the Street Fighter thir- uh, 30th anniversary? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to have everything up to a Third Strike or something like that. No, Third Strike is on there. Third Strike is on there? Okay. Yeah. The, there's a, there's 12 games total, but Street Fighter 1 is on there. Like Alpha One, Two, and Three are on there. Like, there's the two different versions of the two different versions of Three are on there, but and, and Third Strike is on there. But there's only certain ones that'll be online. So like Third Strike will be online, Alpha Three will be online, and whatever the whatever the Street Fighter Two one will be online too. So oh, okay. also they'll have online. There's like three of them that'll have online mode. So I was super excited about it. I'm a big Street Fighter fan, so that'll be cool. But uh, speaking of that, do you guys want to get to uh, to what we've been playing for the week and what we bought? Sure. Speaking of Street Fighter, I bought a, I, I bought the uh, John was with me. I bought the arcade stick for uh, Tatsunoku versus Capcom. Tatsunoku. The Wii one, yeah. I actually got. It, I found it at uh, at the exchange in Milwaukee for like forty bucks, and I thought that was a good deal because I actually went to uh, Disc Replay in um, in Indiana, and they had and they had one there for more without the box. So mm-hmm. they're selling it for like sixty for just the stick, and I got the forty for the stick with the box. So. I was pretty excited about that. Like speaking speaking of uh, fighting games, so does that just plug it in the Wii Yeah, the it, you can actually use it. You can use it on the uh, NES Classic or the Super Nintendo Classic because it has the same plug. Yeah, and yeah, it just goes right into the Wii so you can use it for pretty much any Wii U game or any Wii game that uses the classic controller. That's so awesome. you know, I was playing like Super Street Fighter Two on uh, on the Wii U with it, you know, just to try it out. But you know, I was thinking I. I didn't even think about it. Like right after John and I did the Streets of Rage video, I was like, "Oh, I can play Streets of Rage like authentically, like with the you know, with the <laughs> stick and all that, and feel like I'm playing the arcade and all that stuff." So yeah, so it's cool. I always wanted an arcade stick, and you know, most of them are pretty expensive. So I like the design of that one, and I thought it looked cool. So I kind of went for that. I'll probably do a video with it at some point. But it's a pretty heavy duty. It's well, it was definitely heavy. <laughs> it's big. It's yeah. like uh, I mean, it's uh, it's under my it's under my uh, thing over there, but. It's a, it's pretty, it's pretty large and it's got like all the buttons mapped out and there's a, you can like lock it, you know, so like the, I think you can put a lock, a lock on there so nobody, so you can't accidentally hit the home button or something like that to go to the yeah. menu and, and there's like turbo modes and stuff like that on there. So, and like the start and select is like on the side so you don't accidentally hit it. 
But uh, yeah, it's just a something I wanted to get. I wanted to see if I could. I know they make like a a Wii to USB converters, and I was going to try to see if I could get it to work with the Switch too. But as of right now, it works. It just works with any of the any of the Wii plug, and you can use it. You can use it for the Super Nintendo too, the the SNES Classic and the Super Nintendo Classic. So it's pretty rad. I bought Pac Man Verse also, and I know I I just realized after I got it that you already have that one, right, Jeremy? Yeah, I have it. Okay, yeah, I found it for ten dollars, and I was like, yeah, I'll try it out. But then I forgot you had it too, and I was like, well, uh, whatever, <laughs> I'll, I'll buy it anyway. And uh, now we can both play it. Yeah, I made a trip to uh, yeah disc replay. I went to the disc replay in in Indiana. I didn't buy the Wii there because uh, it was kind of expensive. You could either get like a regular Wii or a Wii with the Wii Motion Plus for like fifty or sixty. I thought that was too much, so I ended up that not was the getting same prices as down here. Yeah, I thought it probably would be. Yeah, I, I ended up I ended up getting one for thirty on on eBay, so I did find one for thirty, but I haven't got cool. it yet. But I did get a Saturday Night Slam Masters. I found that the uh, wrestling game, the Capcom wrestling game. Oh, nice! Game, yeah, which I've never played, but I always wanted to. Like Hagar's in it as a playable character, yeah. and uh, I got it for twenty bucks. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. Where Mike Hagar takes his experience as a professional wrestler and then transfers it later <laughs> on to become a politician, a I mayor, like, or a politician. It's like to use it, use it for his uh, mayorship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse Ventura in the future. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's it that was, was his inspiration. He was actually playing Saturday Night Slam Masters, and, and he played Final Fight, and he said, "I can do that." <laughs> it was <laughs> like, "What stops me?" What stops? Right. He's like, "Mike Hagar can do it. I can do it too." Right? Yeah, it was just one of those games I was looking for, and I finally and I never see it anywhere, and I was like, "Oh shit, there it is!" And I bought like uh, I bought like some Wii games too. I got like a. Uh, I got like I did I did the buy five get six free so I got Knights into Dreams for free nice. because I never played that game and I know I hear it's terrible but I wanted to try it the Wii one it was like three bucks and it was free so I understand your plight Jeremy from living so close to a disc replay like how easy it is to spend a lot of money there because yeah because I found a lot of shit that I wanted that was like four dollars that I was like I tried to hold myself <laughs> back because I could have bought like twenty different things there for a lot but. The probably the silliest and most ridiculous thing that I got was Gizmo, was the Gremlins Gizmo game on Wii. Did you know that exists? Because I didn't. Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> on no. Wii? There's a Gremlins game on Wii that's like a that's like a party that I guess it's like a mini game party type game, and it was like six bucks and it was like something I'd never seen. I thought it was absolutely hilarious, so I bought it. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do uh, I'm gonna do like that's a right. YouTube play of it at some point, but it's just one of those things that was too bizarre to not buy. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up picking that, that up, out. and I got a, uh, then I got Sonic Colors as well because I heard that game was cool, and I picked up Celeste on the Switch, of course, which will, which we will talk about in somewhat detail in a minute. But is there anything else that you, is there anything you guys bought that you want to, do you want to talk about for the week? I mean, I, I can give an update on my. Uh, I still have not bought that micro. I went back in to just replay it. it oh yeah, there. yeah. I was going to ask you. It was about still that. there. I was still there, and you it's didn't still get there. it. And I, I can't remember what I said. I think I might have said it was sixty, but it's actually sixty-five. Yeah, you said it was sixty-five. But um, I went back in. It was still there, and uh, I walked out of disc replay without buying anything. Wow. So oh, look! Look at you. Wow. <laughs> that was hard to do. It was yeah. really hard to do. <laughs> right. I saw a few things I wanted, but uh, yeah, I walked out, and uh, so it's still there. So I don't know if. I have a good weekend at work, and I make good tips. I might go pick it up, but you could I'm probably not haggle it down, couldn't you? I don't <laughs> haggle think it down they, to sixty. You can't really haggle at a I don't think they, do it there. they don't do I that. I thought about yeah. maybe bringing some shit in and trading it in, but that's like giving away my kids at this point. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, you could be like, well, I have ten of these AG one hundred ones. Uh, do you want one of these? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of those would be worth. Yeah, one of those would be worth enough to trade straight across. I would hope. Yeah, because you got a bunch of you got a bunch of Game Boy Advances. You could probably trade one for another, right? A regular Game Boy for a Game Boy Micro, something like that. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. I was gonna ask you. I completely forgot about that, but I was gonna ask you if that Micro was still there. You, uh, yeah, you it's ha- still there. You have more willpower than I do. I would have bought it by now. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't really have the. Like, I literally didn't have the money for it at the time, mm. so I was like, I could throw it on my credit card. No, that's stupid. Yeah, I'm that's a bad. That's a bad adulting decision. Yeah. That is a bad adulting decision. It's uh, not like a. Yeah. It's not like being. It's an a addict. bad time. It's the end of the month. All my bills are due. I can't uh, buy a micro. Uh, yeah. 
I was going to say, is it like being an addict? You know, like when you smoke cigarettes, like every money you have is, is cigarette money. <laughs> right. Whether Whatever's you should left. actually spend it or not, you still do right. because you're an addict. I like digging in my couch for change <laughs> to buy a Game Boy. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it'll be there for a minute. Yeah, I, was, I, I don't know. And if I end up having to spend 75 on it eventually instead of getting it now when I can't really afford to buy it, you know, that's fine. Cool. If I can afford to pay a little more later and still get it eventually, you know, that's all I'm saying. Sure. But, uh, that's all I thought about buying other than I did actually buy Celeste. Yeah. So we'll talk about that later. Sure. Did you uh, pick anything up for your company, Kevin? Or I don't know what your, uh, how you're. Ex- no, yeah. So I totally picked up a, uh, Nike on Nintendo charger for the Joy-Con specifically. Oh, okay. Um, uh, and the reason why that's like a huge deal is because I like, I'm really big on accessories for the Switch right now. Um, Because I want to be able to kind of carry it all in my carrying case Mm -hmm. and make sure that uh, whatever part of it needs to work should work. Um, So I've got a car charger. I've got an an extra charger. I bought, um, I can't remember Best Buy's brand, but I bought Best Buy's brand dock. And that dock is a lot smaller than the uh, OEM dock. Um, And so that was like a really big deal for me because I was like, this can all fit inside this one thing and I'll always have everything I ever need for the switch inside of it. So I bought these uh, charging stations for it um, for two reasons, obviously, because like, you know, I've got my two that are already on the switch and then I've got an additional two for all the four player games. Mm. Um, But the other reason is that when I'm at events and, you know, my company's putting it on and whatnot. Kids always snatch the entire switch out of the dock to try to get the controllers that are charging on there. Oh. So not only am I having people like possibly mishandling my switch, yeah. but I'm also having people that every time I say, no, the controllers need to charge, they go, let me just get these off of the switch. And it's like you're stopping them from charging. Yeah. Like, so yeah. having this charge base is perfect because now I can charge it right behind the television and it's got like this little green glow. Oh, okay. um, it glows red while it's charging, uh, and then it glows green when it's done charging. Yeah. Um, and so it was perfect because, funny enough, I noticed that Tatsunoko stick missing at the exchange. Oh, did and, you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. I actually got that for a really good price at the exchange. I told him, I was like, honestly, I'm really only willing to spend like $15 on this today. And uh, sure enough, he brought it down to 15 bucks, and that was perfect for me. Oh, okay. Oh, you get the chargers for the, from there? Yeah, so I got the charges from the exchange okay, for yeah. uh, for fifteen bucks. Nice. And yeah. then uh, outside of Nintendo, of course, with the rest of the world, I bought Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I haven't played that yet, but it looks, it looks really it looks cool. Really cool. Yeah, I don't really, I don't know anything about Dragon Ball Z. Like, I never watched the show, but I'm a huge. I mean, I like Dragon Quest a lot, so I mean, I know uh, Kerry Toriyama and like, and I like the art style, the art and all style. That, but, but I don't know like any of the. I mean, I never, I never watched the TV show, so. I don't know any of the backstory and all that, but the game looks awesome from what I've seen. Like yeah. it looks amazing. Like just from it's how it's a fighting game, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a fighting game, but it looks like I don't know. Like it's just the animations and the super moves and stuff on there. Looks, so look um, better than I think. One of the really coolest things about Dragon Ball Fighter Z is that they made sure that the game looks cool to play. Yeah. Um, the game is, I think, incredibly animated. Um, and I think that it's accessible enough to people that aren't necessarily, you know, the best at fighting games. Um, but at the core of it, I've been telling people, I think the reason why Marvel versus Capcom Infinite failed is because it doesn't look cool. Um, Dragon Ball Fighter Z to people who've never played any of the fighting games are like, but this looks cool. Um, so, I mean, it's fun to play. I think it's, uh, kind of simple and straightforward. Um, but it does have a, you know, have a have space for you to kind of have a mastery of it. And, uh, yeah, it looks great, man. I One review I read said that um, basically their critique of the other Dragon Ball fighting games were that they were mostly for Dragon Ball fans. Exactly. They, their, their reviewer felt that they, did, they didn't reach out to fighting game fans. But this one, as they said, is for both fans, fighting game fans yeah. and mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Z fans. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm interested in it. Because a lot of the other ones were like 3D battle stuff, right, where you kind of like fly around and – have to find the other guy and all that. Yeah, so like the Budokai and the Budokai Tenkaichi series really kind of step away from the last time. So the very last time I could remember, and this, I might be wrong, it might be a a GBA port of the game, but uh, Super Bout was on Super Nintendo, and that was the last time I could remember a a, um, a 2D oh, Dragon okay. Ball fighting game. Yeah. 
Um, and I think the other ones tried to say, like, let's step into the future of gaming. There's 3D games. What's so special about Dragon Ball? The uniqueness to Dragon Ball is the whole terrain is at your, you know, your fingertips. Mm-hmm. And um, I do agree that a lot of those games were homages or were uh, were fan service, where it was kind of like, let's do something that's different from a regular fighting game that's unique to Dragon Ball and the series. And I think they appreciated that for a while. But uh, but when we got to like the sixth or seventh installment, <laughs> it was kind of like, oh, OK, we've had enough of this concept. And there's a ton of other people who would enjoy a Dragon Ball game mm. that's a fighting game. So, yeah, yeah I, I agree with that, John. Yeah. And well, and this one's made by the guys who do like uh, Guilty Gear and like uh, Blaze Blue and stuff like that, right? Which and you could totally feel the guilty games... and the the guilty and the Blaze Blue in it. Yeah. They've got air dashes, they've got combo bursts, a lot of things that are like hallmarks of that series. Um, I think they do a very good job with their tag system. Something that's really easy to kind of um, kind of wrap your mind around. It's also still got assists from teammates and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I kind of look at it as a game that plays like Guilty Gear with the team aspect of a Marvel with yeah. characters from Dragon Ball. Yeah, I was going to say it's got the the 3v3 that like you didn't get from the last Marvel game that came out, so nope. that's, so that's good. What do what do you think are the chances of it ever showing up on Switch? I mean, there's been a lot of I mean, I know there's already a couple Dragon Ball games on there, right? Or at least there's one on there. That's a good question. Um I mean, I, I would have assumed that if it was going to come to the Switch, it would have already done it. Yeah. But I guess I don't know. I don't know if I could give you a really good answer on on will or won't it. You know. Yeah. Well, if, if it feels like some of those games, like they've been in development for so long that uh, that it's just like in the case of like the Secret of Mana remake, they said that like yeah, you know, we started we started developing it before the Wii was ever wasn't anything. A like thing. nobody even knew yeah. what it was. You know, and that may be the same case with Dragon Ball Fighters. So. I don't know. It doesn't seem. I mean, I haven't actually played it, but it doesn't seem like it isn't possible to port it and all that. But uh, no, yeah. I, I figure if they pulled off Doom and they're going to pull off Wolfenstein, they they could pull off Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not like Monster Hunter World, which I've heard a lot about that too. Which uh, yeah, I don't think that could actually go to Switch. But no, I mean, I mean from what I, I have considered PS- buying that, I was looking. Well, I almost did. Well, this is what's kind of holding me back on it is that I heard that it. The regular PS4, it kind of struggles playing it if you don't have the Pro. Yeah, if you don't have the PS4 Pro, it's kind of made for that system. So Mm. I definitely don't have the Pro. That's what's made me a little hesitant about it. And plus, I have like five other Monster Hunter games, and I never really got into. (laughs) I mean, I got I got it for Wii. I got I got it for 3DS. I got it for Wii U. You know, I I got a bunch of the old ones, and I I could never get into it. You know, but apparently, this is like you know every new iteration of. uh, Monster Hunter like makes you know this supposedly makes it a little bit more easier, and I guess this one made the jump to make it even even easier. So it's supposed to be the one that can really get you know if you couldn't get into uh, whatever like uh, Double Cross or Generations or whatever like this will be the one to get. So you into is it enough. easier or more accessible? Or like more accessible is what that? they're saying. You okay. know, like a lot of the stuff that you know were I don't know like it's like Monster Hunter is a very complicated game. Like that's what kind of I can get past on it. It's just like. There's a lot of shit that you need to know. Like you need to yeah. know what to catch to what to get to make the certain types of armor too. and all that and well, I mean all of it's about like killing certain monsters to be be able to build certain weapons and and monster hunting you don't really level up, but like the weapons that you make, that's like the way your levels yeah. go. So like the you know, the bigger monsters you kill, the more the more powerful weapons you get and all that sort of stuff. But uh and that's basically what it goes for. But if you don't really know like what you're collecting or how to make the armor and all that, it's Makes it a really difficult entry point for me. So, I don't know. That's kind of what happened to me for it. And I guess a lot of it's, you know, a lot of people say it's like multiplayer online. And I never really, I only just played single player on it. So, I don't really know. Talk about Celeste for a while before we take a break here. Um, I know. Let's I'd, talk about Celeste, baby. Yeah. 
<laughs> we get to find out that the uh, spoilers. Uh, Celeste is not the girl in the game. It's the uh, no. It's the wow. mount, it's the mountain Mount Celeste. That's not the girl. Yeah. yeah, but uh, that was a I, did play it. I recorded myself playing it, and I call her Celeste multiple times. <laughs> her name is Madeline. So or did, I, did, I, did, I fell for the, the call and link Zelda trick. Yeah. Did you uh, did you change her name? You can actually change her name. Just yeah, I changed her name, so that's another reason why I got confused. Oh, okay. Did you change her I name named to her Celeste? Jer, Jer Jer, named her after myself. Yeah. And then, so I was like, well, what was her original name? And I kept thinking it, it was Celeste, but <laughs> it wasn't. Her name was uh, Madeline. And Celeste, yeah, Madeline. I I remember that eventually. Yeah, Celeste is the uh, mountain that you have to conquer. Let me ask you: How have you been playing it? Have you been playing with the uh, pro controller? Strictly a pro controller. Okay, because I actually this is the only game that I prefer to play with the dog face controller. Like I've been playing it with that because oh. I because I like the um really? I don't know it I, I, it feels like it controls a little bit better with the with the smaller joysticks on the Joy Cons. So mm-hmm. that's what I've been using. Cause I like, I had the, I don't know if you watch, I did a, I did a stream of it too. Like when it came out, like on the, on the Thursday, cause I do a stream every Thursday of new switch games. Check it out. But, uh, I did it with the pro controller and I was having such a hard time with the, uh, pro controllers, uh, digital pad because mm. sometimes when I was trying to push right, it would go like diagonal up or if I was trying to go up, it would go diagonal left or whatever. And I say it on the video a bunch. That's, and I'm like, fuck that's th- part of the game. I'm like, fuck this digital pad, but I didn't feel like it was going exactly where I wanted it to go. But then I started, uh, went to, went to my girlfriend's. Uh, grandma's house and uh and like i was playing it on the handheld mode and i kind of liked the way the joysticks felt there so i was like i'll just try using the dog bone thing so i stuck it in the thing and was playing it last night it actually felt a lot better i felt like i was being more precise about the different directions to push and all that while i was doing it so i'll have to give it a try because there's a lot of points when i'm playing it and you'll see it if you watch the video that i'm like i was pressing right and it went left or i was pressing right and it went straight up like i I'm swearing that the game like didn't get my controls right, which most likely I fucked up, but I was blaming yeah. the game. Yeah, well, I mean, the game is like has this like pixel perfect type of way that you have to like. It's a platformer, but you have to be able to perform in a certain way. Celeste is such a cool game that uh, I could see people like who are really good at it, like doing plays of it. Like I could see that being a thing on Twitch, it's like watching somebody play Celeste really well because it's. Because it's a difficult game, but if you can play it right, it's really cool to watch. Like, I had just yeah. bought it. Like, a, Kevin just had a, a video game party that last week, and I just got Celeste before that. And I brought my Switch with me because, you know, the Splatoon one that I went to, everybody had Switches. And I was like, eh, you know, maybe somebody want to play some f- f- or something. And I was like, man, if I was only good at Celeste, I could just, like, cause you, cause he, <laughs> put it on a screen yeah, someplace. Cause, yeah, because you had a Switch set up, and I was like, I just put mine down. I could play it, see if I can get a crowd to watch me, but... And I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not confident enough in my skills to try to do that. But if if you did, you know, I could see it drawing a crowd because it's, you know, it's cool if you can actually do it right. If you're not just yeah. dying, like, you know, and it, and it and it, and the game makes sure and shows you like how much you've died. I think, um, I think I'm in the 900s probably now. I think that's what it said on mine. Are you in the thousands? A lot of dying. Yeah, I died. I'll tell you, I'm not proud of it. I'm going to tell you how many times I died. 2,244 times. Yeah. Wow. And you've beaten the game, I right? play. I play like shit because, let me tell you, since I knew I was recording it, and maybe this sounds like an excuse, but since I was recording it, I never like stopped moving. So when I was like mulling over, like, okay, wait, I need to do a different approach, I would just keep running and just keep trying over and over again what I was already doing. Yeah. It's kind of like, because that game gets you into like uh, muscle memory because like if you play it a certain point over and over again like you know it's like Mega Man like I guess I'd compare it to Mega Man yeah. like you're just like you're you're programmed to do things in a certain order yeah. and so even if you're not thinking about it and you're like going to try something new you might still go through all those actions that you were doing before mm. and be like oh shit why did I just do that now I'm dead and uh, so I, I think a lot of my deaths were kind of that sort of thing but I still, I mean, I died a lot, and yeah. at, at a certain point, like once I hit the thousand, I was like, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna see. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna die a lot. Well, it doesn't. You were like, part of. live it. You would just like live it out, live out the death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to. I have to finish at this point. Well, it doesn't really yeah. like penalize you for for dying a bunch. I think it wants you to, and it's just kind of like, this is the number that you died. Like just just so you know, but. It's 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 it encourages you to like try different things over and over and over again, and it has a really really quick loading from when you died, like goes right back mm-hmm. to where you were. Yeah, and it's kind of like uh, Jess was saying it while she was playing it. It's like a 
a lot of it's like a one one screen puzzle thing, you know, where you have to figure out to get to the yep. next part, and then you're on it and the next screen, and then you have to figure that part, even though there are ones that go for a minute, you know, where you have to kind of go through a few screens before it does the checkpoint for the next thing. But at least there's, like, constant checkpoints. There's no loading, like, after you die. It's just like, boom, you're right back into it. And it makes the desk the makes the desk like not bad, you know. It makes it really easy to play, even though you suck at it, you know. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what I got. It. Even though there were a couple times where I just got too frustrated and just just decided to play Darkest Dungeon instead. But you know, I just like put it down and switch. I to mean, it, thing. there's a boss which you know he's not too far into the game, but there's a boss that is definitely. I don't think I'm spoiling anything with saying that was for me that was the hardest part of the game, like that boss that you're talking about. So. Osh- Oshiro. You got to get past it, man, and I think it. I think it'll open up for you, and you'll feel a little better about it. Are you talking about Oshiro? The yeah, I'm talking about Oshiro. Mm. Yeah, I already beat him. Oh well, that's the hardest part. I beat him on the video. You, you say he's the hardest part of the whole game. You think? For me, he was. Yeah. Okay. There were a couple times, like with the wind stages, where it was like getting kind of frustrating for me because there's like wind that really blows you around a lot. Reminded me of Mario Two, the original Mario Two. If you ever mm. played that beast yeah. of a game with the wind and how you well, you don't like jump off the screen like that one and it's not as mean as that game but still <laughs> but it's definitely um yeah if, i don't know if you guys who haven't played it um have looked at it at all but it's very it's very much like a lot of people want to compare it to super meat boy i think it's a lot better than super meat boy because i because i don't think meat boy had the had the story and the characters in there as like no. Celeste does you know so i can see the the comparison but maybe because yeah, you can jump off walls way, and all that but way more developed but super meat boy is very much like Here's a level, uh, and here's another level. It's like it doesn't feel as like as like wound together as well as uh, Celeste does. Yeah, where Celeste, it's like it's a story that's going, and there's characters talking and all that. Meat Boy's just like your girlfriend got kidnapped. Go find her, and at the end of every level, you find her, and then she de- and then she goes away, and then you go to the next st- stage. There's not really like a development in the story. At least it didn't have. I played Celeste a lot more than I played Super Meat Boy. I do have that on Wii U, but I didn't. It didn't hold my attention as long. So. Mm. And Celeste is uh, the soundtrack is amazing. I bought it. Uh, the soundtrack's I sh- wonderful. I should have set it on my stuff that I bought, but I did buy the soundtrack off iTunes for uh, eight ninety nine. So, and it's oh, like wow. almost two hours worth of music on there. So it's totally worth it. And you could probably you can probably find it on Spotify if it's on there. It's That's on YouTube. I, I listened to it at work the other day. Well, everything's on YouTube, but yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but if you want to play it like on your phone and do other things, you know, because. Playing right. things off YouTube is the worst way to do it, unless you have YouTube. In my case, I in my case I worked while I was playing on YouTube. Yeah, but if you wanted to like drive somewhere, you can't do it because you can't have the right. Google Maps up and all that. Or if your or if your phone like automatically turns off, YouTube turns off too. So YouTube, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. But yeah, no, the soundtrack is awesome. It's nine dollars. Totally get it. It's totally worth it. I, I I'd get, say the story is wonderful, like through and through. Like in spite of all the platforming and how that kind of is disjointed from the rest of what you know the story is like they kind of seem like they're separate from each other but yeah. the further you get into the game the more they make sense like why this like arduous platforming can actually fit into the way the story is kind of positions itself and the character development and everything so it's a great game i died a lot I, like i said i'm embarrassed but i uh you shouldn't be I plan on going back and trying to get well i know i shouldn't there's one point where i was like because i've watch different people review it online and stuff since and since it came out and uh you know these are people that i know have beat like all the dark souls games you know and oh, they're saying this okay. is hard so in my head i was like if i can beat this game i've beat a game that people that can beat dark souls that people say it's the dark souls say, this of game is hard. Yeah. <laughs> in a way it kind of inspired me to like maybe actually try to play dark souls finally oh. and maybe try to beat it i've tried to play it but i i it it discourages me, and I and I don't see any point in continuing it because well, I get so frustrated. Well, some people say that Dark Souls is the Monster Hunter of uh, games. <laughs> I've, heard, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've heard those compared to each it's other. The also, Monster Hunter of uh, of uh, action RPGs. Yeah, no, that's what I've heard because they both have like really long fights in them where you have to fight like one character a lot, and that takes a lot of damage, and and you have to dodge a lot and all that. So you could compare those two to each other, but. Yeah, I mean it's a it's definitely a, it's a difficult game, but it's a, I don't I didn't never felt like it was unfairly difficult, and then Jess is playing it too, so it's it's cool that we've both been able to play it, and she doesn't. Seem I don't think I've ever really played anything quite it. like it. You know, yeah. it's pretty unique in its overall presentation. Yeah, it was a it was a crazy thing to come out of that Nintendo Mini Direct, right? Where it's like, yeah. and you even said yeah. it, Jeremy even said it, where he's like, uh, where he's like, oh, so what's our game for January? Celeste, and Celeste ended up being a really good game. 
Because you and know, it's my game of 2018 so yeah, far. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, yeah, it's only been a month, but it's it's a good it's game good. though. It's it's it got. I mean, it got a perfect score and uh, well, it got a 10 on IGN, and a lot of people have reviewed it really well. So it's uh, totally worth checking out if you're if you're into those uh, 2D old looking but definitely modern mechanics and all that 2D platformer. Like I've definitely been having fun with it, and I want to stick with it. Until it's over. Did you find any of the mixtape levels or anything like that in the extras? Yeah, I found I found a total of the f- five of the tapes through my playthrough. Five out of fourteen. Oh, okay, I, I haven't. I have yet to find one, <laughs> and, I, and I'm like in the, I'm in like the sixth level, I think. How many levels are there? Like eight or nine? You don't remember? I think it was like yeah, seven or eight. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't. They're know usually like divided into two parts, pretty much. Is kind of how I think of them. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's totally worth playing, and and I guess uh, a lot of it is about like the main character kind of dealing with her own like fears and struggles and depression and all that stuff, and I like that. I like that stuff. I can relate. So I'm a. <laughs> You know, makes it makes it uh, more intriguing for me story wise. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There are spots where I got a little like misty eyed. Just uh, like, some it. of the stuff in there is really poignant. Like it's like spot on. Yeah. Gotcha in your feels. Yeah, it got me right. My feels, feels. like yeah. descriptions of just certain like ways of feeling and how, like the metaphors used to describe it. Just like kind of hit me. Yeah, <laughs> it could have got me a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, I like how uh, everybody's kind of like trying to push her down through the whole game. It's like uh, you got the old lady saying like, you know, you can't make it. And, and like her shadow, her shadow self is like, you know, you can just leave and relax and do all this stuff. And she's like, no, I'm, I'm going to do it. So it's a lot of that like fighting against. And and, and, and and even later, it's like sort of like where she's kind of making but her own. Don't forget about Theo, though. Theo's nice. Theo. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's in he there. He was real nice. <laughs> yeah, I was. I thought that at first, I thought that maybe he was kind of part of her mind too, but I guess, I guess not. He's just a uh, Mister Selfie, Mister Cellphone. Yeah, but I, I, I to, we, we totally recommend it as a podcast. If anybody hasn't gotten it yet, you should definitely check it out. It's uh, twenty bucks, but I think it's totally worth it. Yeah. It's, uh, and check out my uh, full playthrough of it if you want to. If you don't, if you don't mind the game being spoiled for you, yeah, you can watch Jeremy it's play on our YouTube page <laughs> in like uh, ten hours or something like that. I think it's like your total. It's about it. Yeah, it's right around ten hours. Yeah. To, and I mean, I I left it. I left all of it in there. I didn't really trim off any fat. So yeah, you yeah. get an authentic experience. Yeah, we both we both did a video of it, but I did a yeah the the um just covered it when it when it went out and I and I played it for like two and a half hours. And uh, Night in the Woods comes out tomorrow, so I'll be playing that one yep. for for the stream as well. Which a lot of people that was on a lot of people's lists. They think we said this before for like best games of last year, so I'm really excited to play that game. Which I actually almost bought it for PS4 a couple times, but I just didn't have time to play it or got distracted by some other game for whatever reason. And now it's coming out tomorrow, so I'm excited to check that out. And uh, the uh, Dragon Quest Builders is on pre order now, or is uh, you can like no. you can pre-load. pre you can pre purchase it and preload it and all that. So I'll probably do that too. Which is cool. So it's forty, right? It's fifty. Fifty, okay. Yeah, I'm still gonna get it, but and I never played I, the other I version s- of it. I still eventually want to check out that Flame in the Flood game, just because uh, for I listened to, to the yeah. album by Chuck Reagan uh, the other day, and it's actually a decent album. Oh, what what he does, like his soundtrack that he does for that? Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's like alt country, like they say. So I mean, it's you know he's an alt country times, star, but it's cool. Instead of an indie rocker. Yeah, just wait for it to go on sale. There's still some games that are on sale for that. Uh, even uh, the when we were talking about Dragon Ball earlier, that uh, the Dragon Ball Xenoverse one's on sale, too. It's like 15 bucks off. But yeah, we got that on there. I think ARMS is on sale right now. or it was. Yeah, ARMS is on, I think ARMS, on sale. Isn't like ARMS and Splatoon on sale? I thought, or maybe not. not sure. I don't know about that one. I don't know about Splatoon, but I know but I know Arms is on sale. There was a few games that I had gotten already that were on sale on there. But yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, we don't we didn't want to get too too deep into, into Celeste, but. Yeah. I'm, we might spoil it a little more in the future, but for now, yeah, just buy it, play yeah. it. It's awesome, and it's for everything. Like you can get it on. I think it's on Steam, and it's on uh, PS4 and Xbox. Yep. And but why would you get it Switch? for anything else than uh, portable and TV? I was just it. getting ready to say I, <laughs> yeah. I, I am definitely on that on that uh, wagon right there. Where if there's something that suffers no type of performance loss, yeah. I don't see why I would not get it on Switch. So. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I, actually, I didn't even know. I didn't even know it was an exclu- it wasn't an exclusive until like a couple until like a day after, and I was like, oh, oh yeah, it came out on other systems, but I didn't really. But it's know, also great yeah. that it's a simultaneous release because it puts the switch like on the same level as everything yep. else. Yeah, they need they, they need more of those. We've talked about that, like how they yeah they definitely need to. It doesn't need to be like delayed and have the switch tax and all that and have like the same price and come out on the same day and all that. So it should be. 
Anyway, cool. All right. Uh, that's our Celeste. So let's take a break and then we'll come back and talk about uh, iPlay games. Let's do it. All right, cool. We have Kevin on here on, as a guest. Um, I met you a couple events back. I think I met you originally on a ValorCon, right? Yeah, I was going to say so. I think we met for the first time at ValorCon, yeah. and so now if this is 2018. That was 2016. Was it? Oh yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I think you were specifically in Mario Kart or something like that. Uh, I played. I'm not sure. I played Mario Kart with you for a while i was kind of yeah, I, I, I came there say. i came there early like i got there on a friday and there wasn't a whole lot to do so it's kind of like walking around and and you started setting up uh nintendo stuff so i kind of just gravitated to that uh, but, okay but yeah, yeah you do uh so so you do most of the um basically you provide systems for parties and whatnot right like what like what all do you do yeah so okay um like the easiest thing I think most everybody always recognizes is like equipment rental and stuff like that. So, you know, when people are having parties or their competitive tournaments or there are conventions that are trying to have, you know, some type of video game entertainment, I generally, you know, um, work with groups like that on bringing the equipment for it. Um, <clears throat> more behind the scenes than that, though, there are groups that have very big ideas on engagements and activations with video games. And a lot of times my company gets brought on to either help staff those particular kinds of things or um, I a lot of times consult on the planning and then on the execution um, because there's a ton of companies that are like, hey, we know we want to do video games at an event, but they really don't know the how or the why. They don't know what would be a good idea, what would be a bad idea, what event, what kind of games fit for a particular kind of event. And, um, you know, I kind of have parlayed my experience in doing my own personal events and being able to kind of sample some of those types of things and bring that, you know, on a corporate or a, you know, plus 500 employee type situation. I mean, in my spare time, a lot of people like uh, for me to do play by play with my voice and whatnot. So I have a lot of fun doing that. Oh, cool. Uh, people um, that don't know much about games or sometimes gaming uh, really kind of enjoy someone being able to try to deliver what's going on in the game, keep their attention, and then try to make them laugh at the same time. Nice. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So you get to do uh, commentary stuff then, right? Like for uh, Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Like, um, I would love to go see, I mean, when we were, uh, and I know, and you told me you were going to be involved with MGC, when uh, Jeremy and I were at MC, MGC last year, the Midwest Gaming Classic, they did a, um, they did like a Smash Brothers thing that had like a little bit of commentary, but it wasn't. And it, it, it wasn't like uh, Evo and like that type of thing, you know, where they're like really into it. But are you are you going to be doing anything like that for this uh, MGC? So, yeah, think? no, um, I'm actually going to be bringing um, bringing some more consoles for them. We've got some ideas on a couple of the games I think we want to bring. Um, but at the core of it, I'm going to probably be running some tournaments over the course of the weekend. Nice. And um, I'm going to probably be commentating them, you know, kind of for a crowd, that type of thing. And, uh, yeah, not really an uh, e uh, evolution or a major FGC kind of thing. It's going to be a lot of stuff that's just for fun. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, are you actually planning some of the tournaments then for the MGC? Or, or, or you're just going to have... I think I'll have some input. I don't want to say that I'm planning them. But, yeah, I think I'll definitely have some input on some of the stuff that will be there. So, um, I mean, I'm always open to suggestion. People mm -hmm. have... I've, I've brought stuff sometimes on one single person's request, knowing that it won't be that big of a deal to bring it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like doing it, you know. How how long have you been uh, doing this for? Have you been setting up stuff? So I specifically started I Play Games back in 2009, is it now? Um, and at the time, I was really just kind of interested in doing tournaments specifically for like Street Fighter and Smash Brothers. Okay. And, um, you know, those things were a lot of fun. But then 
Um, and I, I, I say this now all the time. We did an event, um, and I don't know how, uh, what the age for this, the age appropriateness for, <laughs> for the podcast is. Oh, you can, you can say anyway. whatever you want. You can, you can take yeah. care of it in post. Oh, no, uh, we say whatever you want. We don't, called, we don't edit um, it. Turn yeah. that bitch into an arcade. Mm. And this was before the birth of like all of our arcades we have now in the scene. Yeah. And so the point of it was that there was going to be a lot of games there that you really enjoy, had a good time with and played. And, um, you know, we would throw in a tournament almost like for people to kind of, you know, have something to watch. It was the spectacle. Okay. Um, and funny enough, man, we went to this one bar. I'll let them remain nameless. And we brought like 65 people there one night. And this bar probably couldn't have been no bigger than maybe like 1,200, 1,300 square feet. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a lot of fun. People remember that night. There's a lot of great photos from it. And I'll never forget the owner basically saying, I really don't think this gaming and bars thing is going to take off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I remember know. saying, I was just kind of like, like we brought, like, and I, you could go back to the bar right now. On a Monday or a Tuesday night, we went on a Monday. Mm-hmm. On a Monday or a Tuesday night, yeah. it is desolate. Like there's tumbleweeds coming out the door. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so now, like Chicago has like eight or nine arcade bars, and I remember I kept begging people. I was like, dude, you got to try this. Like this whole idea where yeah. people are getting older, but they still love video games mm-hmm. and they want to drink something while they play video games. I was like, it could work. He's like, I just need somebody that can help me, you know, get like a liquor license and pin down the venue you um and so <laughs> i thought of it you know yeah. i thought of it back in like 2010 oh, sure. before all of these fabulous arcade bars that are out now yeah. you know um you know came to fruition but yeah man I, I got started in 2009 and was just running tournaments and then i started saying why don't i throw parties yeah. um and then i was throwing video game themed parties for people um one of my friends, we've been consistently hosting his birthday around doing something fun and silly for video games. So, um, yeah, it's the job that I made, and I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. How how far back does your uh, do your consoles go? Like, uh, like what is the oldest console you think you'd bring to like a video game party? Like, does people have Super Nintendo parties or anything like that? Probably not. Yeah, that so old. no, I mean, like I, my personal collection goes back to the fifty two hundred. Um, I have just about everything in there. Um, I've never got requests for the 5200 in public. Mm, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously, the one that I think always is It'd just be a sweet like, party. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, uh, if I could get some of the games for this thing to work sometimes, and then I got to find a yeah. television that takes uh, well, yeah, takes yeah. the cable out right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The pro- um, or the prongs. It's got prongs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, about that. Yeah, no, odds on, if I ever go to something and I bring retro, the oldest is always the NES. You know, that's kind of where most everyone that, you know, would be interested in sitting down and playing really kind of start with. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious, like, um, if there's, because I I know there's a lot of, like, competitive gaming stuff, like, now. I was wondering, like, how many generations you went back or if people actually specifically request, like, the NES or, you know, I mean... So there's, if I'm picking out something that I think is fun to play, still drive some competition, and like virtually everyone, I enjoy Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but Mario Kart 64 is easily the most popular Mario Kart ever of all time. Oh, yeah. Um, people old want to play it. People young want to play it. Like, it's something about Mario Kart 64 and the time period that it kind of came in where virtually Everyone right now in video games is in some way familiar with it. I can put down the newest Mario Kart, and most people will be like, oh, I really don't know much about that one. My personal favorite, which is Double Dash, you know, most people will still be like, yeah, I've yeah. never really seen or played this one. Mm-hmm. But if I put Mario Kart 64 down, not only will people play it, but people will play it and request a tournament. And be like, oh, are you going to bring that? Um, it easily is probably one of the most requested retro titles I get. Okay. Do you think it's because of like... Too bad about those 64 controllers that like get worn out. And... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I do have to update 64 controllers from time to time. Yeah. I was going to say, do you, do you think that's because of the um, generation and all that? Like, because a lot of people who were kids playing Mario Kart are like just in their early 20s now. So they're probably the people that are outer bars and stuff like that. That's what I would think. Is so, that's like their nostalgia. Yeah, no, I think it, it fell at that perfect time where like... 
say for instance, you even if you're a a kid that was born in the early 2000s, someone you know had a retro system laying around and they were able to pick up, you know, so, you know, Mario Kart 64, virtually everyone had a copy. So nine times out of 10, if you're playing someone's hand me down Nintendo 64, mm-hmm. you definitely play mm-hmm. a copy of Mario Kart 64. And I think that the tracks in the game are really so easy to kind of just look at, you know, um, now you kind of look at a, a Mario Kart game and it's not because the games are any less good, but there's so much going on that people have yeah. questions about what the heck is even happening. Uh, whereas that game happened in a much more simple plane. The, you know, even the look of it being simple now is nostalgic, but not only is it nostalgic, it's easy to catch on to what's going on. You see where the, you know, turtle shell just came from and who it just shot. Um, and so I think the game is more attractive or at least more, uh, more likable from that standpoint too. Sure. That's a testament to good game design, I guess. Yep. It really is. If it's that accessible to everybody. Yeah. And, and, and you're right. Like Mario Kart eight, like definitely with all the upside down racing and all that, there's like all sorts of things crazy. Shit going yeah. on. Even though that, that's my personal favorite one is, is eight, but I understand that it could be, it could be a little like, um, Intimidating, yeah, intimidating okay, to people time. looking at it who hadn't really played it in a while. Sometimes you'll like finish a, a race and you'll like be like, "What did I just do?" <laughs> <laughs> just like was flipping all over the place for a while there, and I don't even know what happened. When you when you fly into like the the goalposts, like at the very end, like there's a couple uh-huh. of them where you can fly and just hit the top part. Like that was always fun, yeah, because it makes that big like bong noise, like oh, yeah, it's like shh, or gong noise, not bong noise, but. I say on on what Jeremy was saying earlier. Do you, do you have to replace a lot of the controllers and stuff like that from people like beating up the sticks or or what what have you? Like uh, I don't yeah, know. because I mean a lot happens because uh, you know uh, well not only are a lot of different people using it, but the other thing is these things weren't meant to travel. They were meant to sit at the bottom of your television, and they weren't supposed to ever really go anyplace. So um, I mean through this whole process, man, I mean. Uh, a lot of people talk about like, and it's funny we, you know, we just got done watching the State of the Union. Small business man, you had to bootstrap a lot of stuff, and I learned how to fix things like really quickly. You know, oh yeah, um, yeah. I remember fixing, you know, some of my first, you know, consoles and games and stuff like that back in the day as a kid. But um, I got really adventurous when like everything was on the line for some of these things working. Um, troubleshooting some like common problems and whatnot. And if I had to pick a retro system, I feel like it's just the most, oh, I can't deal with it. I got to say the Sega Dreamcast, man, makes it rough on you, man. Uh, the controller ports on that guy will wear out. Oh, yeah. The disk, oh. the, uh, disk drive on that Joker will wear out on you at some point. The um, noise on that thing. The noise yeah. on it. I mean, it it is a very difficult system to maintain. I try I try to keep two or three Dreamcasts like pristine as much as I possibly can. I try to keep them in a uh, tub so that they aren't, you know, uh exposed to a lot of dust from time to time. But uh I mean, I've had an adventure with every system, man. I mean, I've taken apart, you know, my PlayStation 3 and was like, "Yes, I finally fixed the disc tray on that." Taking apart the 360, taking apart the original Xbox. And so like when a new one comes out, um, I'm always kind of like into, so how is this guy going to break so that I oh, yeah. have to go into it <laughs> yeah, and right. figure it out? Do you um, watch like the teardown videos on YouTube and stuff? Like, So a lot of times my first reference are the teardown videos on yeah. YouTube and um, they're perfect because, uh, and I think I probably bought them all at this point now, you know, I've got Nintendo security screwdrivers. I've had, you know, Torque 6 screwdrivers mm-hmm. now for like seven, eight years, you know, so I kind of got an idea of all the tools I was going to end up using needing um and then once i kind of tore them down i worked in it for for five years i was a broke fix guy and so once i kind of broke them down like you demystify the system it's like oh wait a second here's a motherboard here's a fan here's a disc reader there's Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's a processor you know and it's not that complicated Uh, and so yeah no i mean you know i dive into a bunch of these man i mean i you know now at this point you know, I've taken apart a lot of these controllers and I, you know, at competitions, I tell people how you can make your controller tournament legal. 
Um, a lot of times there's a big deal with uh, plugging into a system, especially syncing with the cable on PlayStation 4. And people didn't know. It's like, dude, you can just remove your battery from your PlayStation 4 controller. Um, and then that way it will never resync to a system that you're not playing on. Um, and so, yeah, man, I mean, I've had the adventure of figuring out how to get to these things, how to make the events happen, how to fix the equipment when the equipment breaks on you. Mm-hmm. Um, I did something the other day right before you came to the event tray. Um, the guy had, uh, I think they had Mario Kart 64 at the event, didn't they? I think that yeah, was something no, no, uh, Ryan and uh, Low Kick Tournaments guys brought. Yeah, no, that was there <laughs> for sure. <laughs> he was trying to uh, get it to work. He was like, dude, it takes us like 10 minutes sometime. And I was like, let me give it a try. Yeah. And, of course, I know blowing on it does nothing, but I blew on it anyway, popped it in first time, and it works. But I knew what was happening. The Nintendo 64, you've got to actually clean the the actual clamps as well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes naturally taking the the uh cartridge in and out does that um okay. so yeah i got it to work on the first tr- <laughs> like oh, nice. i don't have trouble yeah. with nintendo 64s or anything like that so yeah man i mean all of it is a lot of fun to me mm. yeah for sure um, how about arcade machines ever- do you supply arcade machines at all or just consoles so i have generally supplied consoles for the most part um i feel like consoles is the part where i feel like that's always going to have a need. You know what I mean? You can have a game room that uh, only has consoles and it still be a game room. I feel like it's really difficult to provide full service gaming with just arcades. Um, But funny that you mentioned that, man. I mean, like I'm building another arcade unit right now. Um, I usually get a lot of PCB boards and stuff like that and build those out. I built this uh, four player arcade board that doubles as like a boom box. Um, I'm building a controller right now for, uh, for, uh, what's the name of this game? Subway Surfers. Um, the I, uh, the iOS Android game. Uh, mm-hmm. I actually found, I actually found an executable for Windows. And so I always used to say, I was like, I wish I could just have a controller to play this game. Um, so yeah, man, I got some square arcade buttons. I'm probably going to drill some holes in the next couple of days. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. I was curious just cause you said you've gotten into repairing consoles. Have you, Mess around with the Virtual Boy at all? The Virtual Boy you got right so there. So you know, I to- so you know, I completely tore this thing apart, man, because one of the uh, I think the left eye wasn't working. Yeah, out. That's yeah. what's going on with both of my Virtual Boys. Yeah, my Virtual Boys. You got to take it out and you got to put it in the oven, man. I did it. I did that. And it didn't work. It worked, but then it fucked but up. But then it goes back. Out. Yeah, uh-huh. you know what? You know what I've experienced because that happened to me too. In my experience, I started up like an hour before people get there and let literally let the machine warm up. And so honestly, that- in, a, in a couple hours, it'll it'll run, it'll run, and it'll run with both eyes working. I gotta try that. Just like yeah. boot her up and just, just like boot her up and let and just bit. let it sit, let it just sit there and play for a while. And I've noticed it'll start off with the scratchy eyes, and the scratchy eyes go away in about forty five minutes. Now that's like hell if you've just got the battery pack. And you're right. putting those six double A's. No, I've in. got the adapter though. You got the adapter, perfect. Yeah. yeah. No, I I just let it run from time to time. Um, I feel like it's less about the sys uh, about the system or the fix. It's more that they basically put a part. They used they used a substance in there that just really wouldn't last over time. Yeah, that glue just broke breaks yeah. down. Yeah, and, and I don't so think all you're doing is like like reestablishing the connections by like making the glue flow yep. or whatever. So you think it actually gets hot enough from sitting that it melts it itself? There's a couple times where I was just like one eye was working and I used to bring it to events because I always thought uh-huh. it was cool because people will like uh, people would be like, I've heard about this virtual boy. I've seen angry video game there. Oh, I saw somebody uh-huh. talk about uh-huh. it. So I always thought it was a really good talking piece. And I was like, this will be cool for them to try. And I would notice one eye wasn't working and I would be like, you know what? Screw it. I've done all of this work to get it here. You're just going to have to close one eye and play it. <laughs> <laughs> And then I would come over later and both I, I would ask a guy, I was like, is okay. everything OK? And they would be like, no, it's actually working. So <laughs> he's like, it's not 3D now, though. <laughs> yeah. <really> close one <laughs> eye, right? Man, I got to try that because like you can actually buy like parts to fix it. Like you can buy the eye shades and the tripods and stuff. Yep. Like second, like third. I don't know. Whatever. Not Nintendo whatever you call it, third party, but they make them now and they're not that expensive. No, Cause actually this guy, uh, this part of it right here that I'm pointing to broke as well. So I had to get that. And this is nice. The hinge part. 
Yeah, the hands broke. The hands broke on me, and uh, the person that I bought this from uh, 3D printed that, and it actually looks kind of oh, cool. cool. Like this, it's like this red shade, and it's kind of cool. got like this uh, kind of like this glare to it, and it actually looks pretty cool. It's cooler than the black one I had. So, is that the original eye shade you have on it? So on the back is an original eye shade for it, um, and I still want to say I have my favorite game in it. Uh, which is Teleboxer. I thought Teleboxer was the perfect concept for something like this. Whereas everything else, yeah, everything yeah, else, I feel like, well. got, yeah, I was like, you could have got this on something else. But I felt mm-hmm. like Teleboxer was a thing where it was like, oh, I'm actually like in a boxing match, you mm-hmm. know. So I thought that was cool. Nice. Have, have you been? Do you have more than one of those of the Virtual Boy? I had a broken unit. <sighs> That might have been 2011 or something like that. I had a broken unit, and I uh, sold that one for parts. And then this one, I basically put all of my work into. Oh, okay. I was going to say it'd be interesting to have a Virtual Boy party. Like, could you ever like uh, game link those? Like the like the game? No, Boys? were you able uh, to do two player? That's with those, one of no? the most interesting things about <laughs> the Virtual Boy is yeah. that. They sold you in these commercials where it was like play games in 3D with your friends, and it was like there is no way to enjoy a Virtual Boy nope. as a group. It is a singular experience, yeah. and the people next to you can't even like. So now, when people play virtual reality, people can watch you do whatever it is you do on the actual television. Mm-hmm. There was no way for people to even yeah. see what it is you were experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they just laugh at how well, funny never, you look. They like never right released now. the link cable. Like, they never it, released the, the link cable. The functionality yeah. is built in Mario Tennis. Yeah, I was gonna say, I thought tennis so, had it. So you can actually, if you take two controllers, you can like harvest the cords and like the ports. Oh. I, I guess, and you can make a link cable, and you can get it to work <laughs> that way. I've obviously not done that. I do have one extra, so I have three Virtual Boy controllers and two Virtual Boys. Nice. I've thought about maybe doing that, but I don't. I don't. I mean, there's a finite number at this point. I don't know if I want to destroy a Virtual. I was Boy just controller. getting ready to say you only have. So, there's only so many controllers left. You only got so yeah. many tries with the system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As for the system itself, I mean, I'm fine. I guess baking the eyepieces and. I'll just keep doing that, but <laughs> I did see some fixes online that involved like using a soldering iron, but I'm scared to do that because yeah. you actually have to like rest the tip on the the ribbon to melt Yeesh. the glue. And, I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, that's that's scary. Yeah, uh, I'll let somebody more experienced come along and maybe try to even in. Yeah. There's nobody. There's nobody. Yeah, that's why I was nobody. asking you. Yeah, that's there true. was one guy on a forum. I can't remember his name now, but like it was like a year ago. I found I went through like this long rabbit hole and found like ask this guy i think it was his like his reddit username or something uh, like, okay it was inactive like he hadn't even used that handle in like forever so i was like there's nobody to fix virtual boys no nope. yeah. nobody specializes in it especially nobody like offers it just up front yeah. <laughs> yeah i think it's important to note at this point that this might be the only time ever that four people on one skype call all owned a virtual boy so yeah uh, oh yeah History, <laughs> history in the making. One. Yeah. <laughs> what was uh, I was, was going to ask you? What's what's like your most uh, interesting or like what was like probably the best party that you think you've thrown like through I play games or, oh, or what you thought was that's the a tough one, man. Because I've had some really fun parties. Um, honestly, eesh. So the very first event always holds a really special place in my heart as far as like parties go. And what was nice about that was uh, this was before uh, this was before Twitch really went mainstream. And I believe Justin TV didn't even have a section specifically for video games. And uh, I met up with somebody whom I've done some work with, uh, you know, recently on a uh, show called Gaming Under the Influence. And um, he actually came and streamed through his uh through his own through his own server and up to his own website um and at the time um i think it was branded vgtv so my very first event i think was like really kind of cool in a few different ways where we were at a local bar we used their internet like really shitty internet and we streamed to like an outside service before streaming was a thing like so what was also really cool about that night was that um and i'm probably going to get into some kind of trouble if these people hear about <laughs> we had a uh we had a uh an exhibition match between two people that had like they had real life quarrels you know they were actually at odds with each other personally oh yeah um 
So we were actually going to be the space that was going to settle this quarrel with a match in third strike. You know, oh. so it was this really highly anticipated thing. A ton of people came to the bar to watch it, you know, and so um we now watch people in esports get all of this, you know, excitement and stuff behind the game. And I feel like it was so uncommon at the time that we had people it it kind of reminded me of wrestling where each person had their own cheering section of people. Um, people brought signs to it and stuff like that. Yeah. So it was really <laughs> funny. Um, I think we're generally at our best when the nonsensicalness kind of comes along. For a few years, we did a stretch of events at this bowling alley, and we have music and uh, some of the, like, so you remember the Street Fighter Four theme song? Um, mm. What was that? Um, what was that called? Uh, uh, Invincible or something like that. But there were a number of people who knew the song and they could actually sing. So, <laughs> so we used to have these guys actually perform the Street Fighter Four theme song, and it was pretty funny. We would get a lot of uh, a lot of social media rants and stuff like that afterwards. So, if I had to, that first event is just always really special to me. And then that spread of events we had at the bowling alley, I think we had like the most fun at those events. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, I didn't know that there was actually like personal stuff, like a like a boxing match <laughs> or something, where it's like. Uh, did you it get, was, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know what's funny is people still talk about it and ask me about it like today, and I sometimes I'm like I don't even remember you being there, you know what I mean? Um, but there was like real, there was like a lot that was actually on the line, yeah. you know. There was real pride and stuff behind those matches. Wow. Uh, so yeah, it was crazy. How long did they play for? Like, did they do like? I don't so know. So they like did. I think they did a first of ten, or, or they did a yeah. set of five, something along those oh, lines. Okay. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, you can make no, it. Like it was a, incredibly funny. We like actually a, did like mock up. Uh, you know how they do the face to face and boxing yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. We did mock up photos of all of that and stuff like that. It was just really funny. It was a good spectacle. And say it'd be like a like a pay per view event, pretty much. But in, uh, <laughs> basically, <in games>. yeah, <laughs> nice. That's awesome. So, uh, what's I mean, what's the biggest? What's the next thing that you're looking forward to that you're doing? The the Next so I, I've got a ton of events actually coming up. Um, really super duper noteworthy. I will be at CompiCon next weekend in Omaha. Um, so for all of your listeners, I know you got a whole base. You got thousands and tens of thousands of listeners <laughs> in Omaha that were waiting for more, this announcement. <laughs> right, more than that. Like I got to be like, in Omaha. I have to be like I have to be Donald. <laughs> I have to be like Donald Trump. Billions and billions yeah. and billions. <laughs> we have the best um, listeners so yeah. on the whole internet. I'll be in uh, <laughs> Omaha next weekend. That'll be a lot of fun. But uh, actually, for a lot of us here, the Emporium Winter Olympics is coming up. And so I want to say I'm probably doing something like eight events for them in a row. And the oh, wow. games are not only going to be video games, but they're also going to be uh, some of their tabletop games. So they are going to have a night for foosball. They're going to have a night for air hockey. They're going to have a night for uh, pool. Um, they're going to have a night for the uh, little ice hockey game that's in a bubble. I always forget the name of that. Um mm. Uh, video game wise, I think there's going to be NBA Jam. There's going to be Madden. There's going to be WWF WrestleFest. There's going to be Cruising World. Uh, we're also going to. You can't do. You cannot not have Mario Kart Eight. Um, I'm going to have Mario Kart Eight Deluxe on one of those nights. And so um, it's really fun because they kind of celebrate it in the way the Olympics does. You win uh, your particular night, and then there's a closing ceremonies on the last Sunday. So that's when you come back, and there's free foods. You get a medal, oh, you yeah, know, yeah. You get whatever <laughs> prize that kind of comes associated with it. Nice, that's cool. And, when, and so, um, I think in the middle of all of that, I think I'm going to throw. I have a monthly fighting game event at uh, Emporium Wicker Park, and so we're going to do Dragon Ball and Marvel on those nights. Oh, okay, what's the uh, what are the dates for the um, Winter Olympics? Is it like how close is it? Like, is it in February? So yeah, basically, it gets started this com this next or next Friday, I guess, because we're still on Thursday. It's on next Friday, so it starts basically February 9th, and it goes to What's two weeks from that? Nine plus four is twenty five. So it goes to the twenty seventh, I believe. I go. I think it goes to that Sunday. Oh, okay. Two Sundays following. Cool. Yeah. If anybody, uh, all the people who are listening in the Chicago area, like, definitely stop by and check that out. Like, that'll be that'll be cool. And that's the Emporium on uh, 
in like Milwaukee so Wood, right? Like if Park. I can, I'll probably try to leave you with a link to the page that keeps the schedule. They, oh, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, each one of the events is going to be in one of the different emporiums. So I know a lot of people are familiar with Wicker Park. But there's Wicker Park and Logan Square, of course. And then there's also the one that just recently opened up on Fulton Market. And so there's going to be events. All of the em- events are going to be mixed at different uh, different spaces. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's kind of like a, kind of like old Riot Fest, like where you had to go to all the different places Bingo. and all yep. that. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Nice. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. Um, well, like mention it at the end of the show. And, uh, and if you can message it to me, I'll put it in the, in the notes for the, for the episode Wait. and all that stuff. So people, so people can find it. Is there was there anybody like uh, any sort of celebrities or anything like that that you met like through your uh, parties that you've done or like on the video game side or whatever? whatever and it's, side? it's so funny because I like frequently forget that. Um, so even though he's met some controversy lately, um, Todd Rogers actually came to my house. Uh, I think that was 2012, maybe Todd Rogers, who's widely considered the first professional video game player. He's got the uh, world record for dragster and and a number of others that have stood for like 30 years. Mm -hmm. He actually came to my house and then right behind Ty Rogers, uh, Walter day actually came by my house. Oh, cool. And, um, Wow. Yeah, no, it was really kind of cool because um, my sister, like the following Christmas, bought me uh, The King of Kong for, on DVD. And I was like, oh, I've seen this. I was like, but this is cool. This is a cool DVD. Let's pop it in and watch mm-hmm. it. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm really silly in my family. And so everybody thinks that I'm making it up when I was like, oh, yeah, that guy, he came by the house and that guy came. By the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so everybody thought I was making it up. Um in more recent years, um, I've met a few developers. I've met a couple of other people. One of the ones I, I guess I hold on to the most because I'm just a big fan of his. Um, I met Richard Sherman from the Seattle Seahawks oh, okay. um, cool. at Emerald City Comic Con. I was hosting the game room for that. And there was a contest for kids playing Call of Duty. They had to go through like this preliminary round. And once they got through with that, they were going to play on a team with um one of the seattle seahawks and honestly i gotta say man richard sherman's got game i thought that honestly i was like man he's football player because i i play with uh bobby wagner and earl thomas before they're pretty popular when it's like comic book events a lot of those groups invite them out um and they were okay at games i was like okay so i could tell you picked up a controller before so i kind of went into it with that same frame of mind and then the first thing Sherm asks me is, is it going to be on regular or hardcore? And I was like, oh, well, he might know something yeah. <laughs> about this. And sure enough, the kid that uh, picked to play with Richard Sherman was like the best I saw that day. I said, I've got a pretty good idea. He's probably better than most people here. And they tear through Bobby Wagner and uh, his partner. And so, uh, yeah, I've met those guys. I met Run DMC at New York Comic Con. I uh, was doing a Just Dance booth. So I purposely had prepared to play walk this way and uh i danced walk this way and i met uh run i mean d uh d from run dmc so yeah nice. i've met a couple of people man yeah no i, th- I figured you might have awesome. run into somebody at some place uh from doing all the different um doing yeah, all that's the different a great intersection circuits. video games and yeah like a great i like a musician that you like admire like yeah no i and what when like i told- a sports star when they told me that he was going, when they told me that D was going to do, it, I said, "Oh well, I have to do something special. And you guys have to tell me when he's coming by. I would really love an opportunity to uh, just kind of shake his hand, say, hey, how's it going?'" Um, and then the one I think is the funniest of all of these. Have you guys ever seen this Cartoon Network or really Adult Swim uh, show called uh, Infomercials? No. They had a uh, yeah. they had a segment called Too Many Cooks. Yep. Oh yeah, no, I heard one, about that. Yeah. One of the <laughs> actresses. One of the actresses came dressed as her character from too many cooks, too many cooks. and what was funny wow. was i noticed what she did was she wore she cut like in cardboard cut her name out mm. and put it around her neck with the, like this really thin wire so i noticed that first and i remember walking up to her and i'm like you're cosplaying too many cooks and i'm looking at her i'm looking at her i was like wait a minute you are from too many cooks <laughs> yeah. like oh, wow. you're, the, you're the girl in the scene and it's funny because she's the uh the particular actress that i met was the college student you know they had the mm-hmm. scene with the college and i was like you like my favorite scene because i'm always like run bitch your name is showing you gotta go and i was <laughs> oh, like she's the one that got murdered yeah got murdered so i was like you couldn't have been more perfect <laughs> 
of a person for me to meet here. And so, uh, yeah, she was just hanging out, and I got a picture with her. So doing she's still her- alive. Yes, yeah, she actually <laughs> made it out. Yeah. It was still, it was, it was a show within the show. So she made it out. Yeah, nice. very cool. Was there have there had there been any any like really weird, obscure games that people have requested you to uh to bring to like do a to do a competition on? I I don't know, like something uh. I'm trying to think of something like like um, that's not more mainstream. Like they wanted to do. So I, I run I run a ton of mystery game tournaments, and so like I have built up a tolerance for. Oh, I think there's this game that exists that you guys have never had at a tournament. We've had some really weird titles, like some things that aren't even exactly games, um, or at least weren't meant to be games. They were like complete like computer failures, mm-hmm. but we found a competitive portion in it. So I don't get weird requests. Sometimes I feel like I get more personal requests on games that don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Um, So people will ask me every so often. There's a guy that comes and asks me for the King of Fighters. And I'm like, dude, nobody plays that. I mean, like, which, which one? There's and like he's like, why don't we have a tournament for it? I was like, because it would be you versus you. Nobody ever <laughs> signs up for that. I've totally tried this like years in a row mm-hmm. and no one signs up for it. So I get that from time to time, yeah. you know, where someone has a game that they want us to make a tournament for. But it's like, it's like I've obscure. tried that yeah. and nobody plays that. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering. I was thinking like maybe it's like a per- like a personal party or something where somebody's like, "I want everybody to play this weird game," you know, or whatever. Like, you know, can you know. just come into my house and set up an Nintendo <laughs> and let, watch me play? Well, I do get hour. that. I do get that from time to time. It's yeah. like, well, hey, you know, like I know you have this one game. Can you bring like a whole setup for it at my party? Yeah. And generally, um, if you have alcohol, I'll say yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's like. Yeah, sure. That's not I'm bad. Saying, you know, if I don't like, have to go too far, and as long as there's a six pack with my name on it, um, so I get that from time to time on birthday parties. Um, I have to say, most people are in sync on what they like together yeah. as a group, and it's not really hard for me to pull something out and just be like, "Let's try this, guys," because I've seen it work in a group setting. And I think one of the things that I uniquely do is that I um I have experience in guiding people through games. And knowing like the parts where people are going to be like, I'm not on board with this, but like prep them for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the last thing I think I pulled out at a party that no one had played was uh, PS4's That's You. And I was just kind of like, how has nobody played this? It's completely free. Mm-hmm. But um, that was a lot of fun. And we did that at a party. So, yeah. I would say like, uh, can you like set up a sixty four for a party and we'll all play like Superman sixty four multiplayer or something like that? <laughs> like a real, like a real well, shitty dumb that's game. That's not a party. That's punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I don't know. People got weird tastes. I mean, you never know. It's like, uh, it's like what's a yeah, what's a really bad game that we could make everybody play? Like somebody who could who has enough money to put all that stuff together and just torture people <laughs> with, with, with whatever game. <laughs> Got to have a backup after that. I think it'd be great if somebody had a party where they were playing a game and there was a party happening, but they were just alone playing a game like on a giant screen the whole time. Like, yeah, you know, I just playing friend, like through the first through the first Final them. Fantasy. <laughs> they're just like playing it, like they're just playing it, and everybody else is having a party around them, and like that's the whole like focal point of the party. Yeah, this this party is you have to watch me play this game. I'm gonna play it over here, <laughs> and I'm in my talk underwear. to me. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> <For some reason. laughs> it's gonna the party will last the length of this game, and then we'll be done. You had you had to have some pretty good snacks to get people out to that party. Yeah. <laughs> or at least the gameplay might it must be it better be interesting, you know. You might be do you, you better be doing like a no death uh, Celeste kill, Celeste run or something like that. Oh, you know, okay. like the, party is, the party is the party ends if you die. You're like, oh, I just died. Everybody out. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's over. <laughs> it's done. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen like those awesome do- awesome games done quick and stuff like that online, right? Where they do all this weird speed runs oh, and whatnot. Ag yeah. HBQ, yeah, yeah. It'd be cool to be able to get involved and stuff like that. They do a lot of like charity work. That's awesome. Like, mm. is there any is there any sort of spoiler stuff that you can tell us about a Midwest Gaming Classic that you're planning on doing there? Or you you probably can't talk about it yet, right? I cannot talk about that just yet. Okay. That's that's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave that to my conversations with Mark. So ah, okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to see you there again, and hopefully, I'll, I'm sure I'll see you at another thing before that. 
Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. I, is there anything else that I missed uh, about the about what you do or something else you want to talk about? Um, I think we just about covered everything. Um, I'm always, of course, updating my uh, my Twitter with different events that are coming up. Um, and I also always try to make sure that I update people on the events that are because I think I got to do maybe about four videos tomorrow for the Olympics. So I'm probably going to unveil all of those on, on YouTube. So, okay. It, do you, uh, I, I remember when we did the Splatoon or when you did the Splatoon two thing, you were streaming that. Are you streaming any of the, uh, Olympic stuff, the winter stuff? So yeah, the Olympics, the winter Olympics is going to be streamed completely from the Emporium Facebook presence. Okay. Um, which I'm actually really excited about. They probably got a 10,000 person reach. And, um, like even when I'm running like tests on their page, people come in to watch the test and comment on the test and they're like, this test looks like it's working. And it's like, uh, all right guys, but we're not actually at the part that's testing yet. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, people are ready. They're watching. So nice. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and everybody can find you at a uh, K fair underscore IPG, right? On, uh, yep, that's Twitter. that's my uh, that's my Twitter, and okay. then um, I'm also streaming live from Mixer probably three nights a week. Um, my handle on there is Kfair three, which is generally my handle on everything. Okay, um, my PSN, my XBL. Um, I want to say my French, my uh, Switch friend code is probably still Kfair three. How so. many? I was going to ask. How many switches do you have? Like, I'm sure you have one for you and one for the job. Right? So just two. Okay. Um, yeah, because right now there isn't a whole lot out to play, you know, that would warrant me to be like, okay, I've got, you know, five, six, seven, eight, or ten of them just yet. You know, um, at this point, there's probably eight different fighting games that I'm playing, and so or people are playing, and so I have, like, generally two PlayStations per fighting game. Oh, okay. um, you know, there's a couple of adventure and party games that I think are really fun on the PlayStation, but I'm still waiting for, you know... Uh, more than one multiplayer game to really kind of make that cost make sense because mm. right now i wouldn't be using it for anything how many uh, how many monitors do you have like you supply all the tvs right for all this oh. stuff so somebody <laughs> came by <laughs> i forgot to ask I, you that i just had some <laughs> of the spare stuff in my house and they were like you have like a house of televisions <laughs> half of them actually funny enough are were tvs that i refurbished or fixed oh, okay um i probably i'm probably getting close to like 100 at this point yeah, I figured you had it. You must have like just a bunch of them, just like one after another, like dominoes, almost just in exactly. a room or whatever. Basically, because yeah. yeah. I got because I'm already, I'm always ready to roll. Like it's sure. like, oh, we got an event. I need to be able to pull four out the closet and mm -hmm. just go. Yeah. Um. So yeah. And there's a, a do you have like a like a truck or something like that you move all your stuff in? Is that part of the business? Or? Actually, no. Um, I generally get to places like. I, I use U-Haul a lot mostly because okay. uh, I get the maintenance through them. So, you know, okay. I don't have to maintain a truck. You know, a truck just gets maintenance without me doing anything on it. So, no, that works out pretty nicely. Do yep. you, and you do, a, do you take like CRTs and stuff like that for the older systems? Man, I let the CRTs go, man. I think I have <laughs> one or two left. And then from time to time, I have some in storage that I go and get. But holding them at uh at where I stayed was like, oh my god, that was so hard. Um, I used I can't to imagine I, that you had a hundred CRTs. Yeah. I used to live. That would in not this, be uh, Domino's. No, please. <laughs> I used to live in this <laughs> condominium. It was like five hundred and fifty square feet, and I used to literally have to climb over CRTs to get out the door. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Now I have a good portion of those and a few other systems and, and TVs and storage and stuff like that. Um, but they are definitely in the minority. It's not a lot of CRTs left. I mean, I guess it would all kind of depend on what kind of event it was, right? If it was like a, if it was like a Smash Brothers, like, like, I, I mean, like a melee, if it was like or a melee original event, one, you're where you right need, on time, that would be perfect for Yeah, where you need like the exact, like, uh, no delay, like, no lag, like, type of fighting yep. game thing would probably be the time that you would use that for. Because uh, I think that I remember that you had melee hooked up at that last one that you did, but I think it was just it was on a regular monitor, right? Or yeah, it was like on a regular monitor. monitor. Yeah. Yep. So because and I was trying to, I was like, was I was like, was Mario Kart sixty four on one? I guess, I guess not. Like I was, uh, no. I didn't see it, but yeah, I'm always curious about that, like how how hardcore you'd get into it, like if you got to like bring the you know bring the full on CRTs or not. Yeah, yeah it would be nice. Um, what it started presenting probably bigger than anything else was that it was a travel hazard, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was just kind of like they took up a ton of space. Um, they also weighed trucks down from time to time. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, 
it was crazy, man. Yeah. It's de- it was definitely a gift and a curse to have uh, Plasma and LCD come along, you know, because when I first got started in this, the only monitors you could honestly use for fighting games cost like $400. So I was yeah. using CRTs for the longest when I first started, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, th- thanks for being on the show, man. Uh, it's uh, nice to... Nice to finally get an official interview with you for uh Yeah, for no, Nintendo this is man great, man. That, I mean, yeah. like, I feel like this happens a lot. Like, people run into each other a ton of times in the Chicago gaming scene. You know, you run into each other. You were at the same event. I'm pretty sure everyone here has been to a bit bash before. But, like, the time you kind of, like, cool out, spend some interpersonal time, talk about stuff, that's that's always, like, the fun part to me. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um yeah, because I think I, I know like for the Splatoon one, I asked you to do it, but I, we hadn't really had everything ironed out yet for our interview. Exactly. So, so it was kind of like, uh, you know, it was better to do it now. We're actually where we we've done enough interviews where it's kind of like a kind of a little bit more. Uh, we kind of we kind of have a basis that we do our show on and all that. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, uh, very very nice for you to come on. And um, this has been our episode one hundred and six. Uh, you know, you can find us at Nintendo Main Podcast or. You know, you can you can find the episodes from there. Or you can like you know re- research us pretty find pretty much find it any sort of like podcast whatever app that you have. You can find Nintendo Main on there. Uh, we also have a YouTube uh, YouTube slash uh, Fingmater. It's where Jeremy and I do a lot of uh, let's plays, and John and, us did, John and I did some uh, drunk plays and stuff like that. Drunk <laughs> which plays, yeah, check those out. Which I haven't <laughs> I haven't posted all of those yet, but I got a couple left that I'll that I'll put up soon enough. And uh, I do Twitch streams every Thursday and Sunday. Thursdays I'll play new new Switch games, and Sundays I do retro stuff. I'm still trying to work work through Skies of Arcadia on Sunday, so I might take a break and play uh, Saturday Slam Masters this Sunday. I don't know, but uh, stay tuned to see that. And uh, we've been your hosts. I'm Trey Johnson, Jeremy Kowski, John Nitter, and uh, you know, we'll, Kevin. Uh, yep. at Kevin Fair. <laughs> Thanks again, buddy. <laughs> And uh, we'll see you next week. See ya. I can feel it coming over me. I feel it all around me. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. It's my destiny. This is how it settles. This week on Nintendo Main, we got Kevin from I Play Games on the show, and we also talk about Wait. Celeste. No, we don't. We don't have Kevin anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he go? <laughs> we don't have Kevin. This week on Nintendo we Main, <laughs> yeah, he's gone. <laughs> he was this like, they're talking about Main. Celeste, I'm out of here. <laughs> we do not have Kevin. Now that we, He's like, now that they introduced me, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right on start, like the moment you were like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> yeah, because right when I said that you were that we had you on the show, you disappeared. So. <laughs> and then it's like, "Oh wait, no, I, quit. <laughs> I quit! I <laughs> quit!"